Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Remember me? Um, yeah, I barely do either. I think it's been two and a half weeks since I recorded last. Um, and let me tell you, my life has been just absolutely bonkers, crazy busy. So I have not had the opportunity to sit down and chat with you guys hardly at all over the last two and a half weeks. I haven't even been really on social media for the last two and a half weeks. Um, I'll chat about that a bit more towards the end of this episode. Um, if you guys are interested in just why my life has been so crazy. Um, but if this is your first time uh, to the channel, welcome. I am Allison, the dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns and the obsessive compulsive knitter um, who would rather do nothing more, um, really. That's all I want to do with my time and my day. Um, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. This is episode 42. And like I said, it's been about two and a half weeks since I last recorded. And we're now in April. So how did it seem like February, no, January and February took like 10 years to get through. And then one week later, it was already April. Like, I feel like as soon as March hit, it was just boom, boom, boom. And maybe that's just all attributed to how busy I've been. I don't know. But anyway, here we are coming to you finally with another episode. There is a very beautiful elephant in the room right here that I will chat a little bit more about here shortly. Um, but this is a knitting related podcast if you're unfamiliar. So I will be talking about knitting. I will be talking about yarn and a little bit of everything in between. So let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to open my soda very unprofessionally and take a drink. Okay, here we go. Uh, yes, I'm going to start with finished objects. Um, I was going to chat a little bit about ad many things, but there really isn't too terribly much going on as far as admin goes. There is still a Ravelry group. Uh, if you're interested in joining, you can find the link to that down below. There are knit alongs happening, um, year long knit alongs. So you can check all that information out in the threads, um, as well as a place to introduce yourself and just chatter away. Um, I am most active on Instagram as Lofty Loops, but like I said, recently not so active. I've just been kind of lurking here and there. And there's also a Facebook page uh, for my hand dyed yarn company. And again, links are all down below if you want to check that stuff out. Um, so yeah, not a lot of admin stuff to talk about. So let's just do this dang thing, shall we? Um, I have put this on my wonderfully amazing dress form that I finally purchased for myself so I can show things off uh, during upcoming market season. And I just think this is so much more amazing than if I were to try to wear it myself and share it with you. Um, I know some people name their dress forms. I have not, but I'm open to suggestions if you guys have thoughts or ideas. This is my stunningly ginormous What the Fade, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. If you guys are returning viewers to the podcast, you will have seen this a lot since... When did I start this? Did I start it in January? Maybe, I think. I'll have to double check. Um, this is a beautiful schlanket, um, as I like to call it, a shawl that is the size of a blanket. Um, it is a six color shawl and you are fading through your six colors as you work this from top to bottom. Here in a minute, I'll take it off of here and hold it up so you can really get an idea for just how massive and beautiful this thing is. Um, when I was in VKL, I was in Minneapolis for VKL last November, and one of my roommates, Julia, who has the I Squish Yarn podcast, she found her colors and immediately cast on while we were there. And in doing so, I was like, you know what, I definitely want to make one of these. It's on my bucket list of things to knit, but I knew that I wanted to stash dive um, instead. And... I quickly changed my mind from stash diving to I want to dye up a custom fade, um, which is all one of a kinds. I knew I wanted it to be pretty pastels um, and just really soft 
neutrally pastels, if that makes any sense. Um, but I was really inspired by Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns. I was watching, um, I can't remember if it was her Vlogmas or Jacqueline Salem's Vlogmas, who's uh, Brooklyn Knit Folk. Um, anyway, at one point, Julie was wearing hers, and hers was also very pastel and very soft, and that inspired me um, to, in turn, make my own soft pastel fade. So that is exactly what I did, and while I was working all of that out, my other roommate, Christy, who is Mama in a Mance, um, she also has a podcast. She decided she was going to stash dive and knit one as well. So all three of us were working on this at the same time. And as per usual, I came in way last bringing up the rear. Um, both ladies have been done with theirs for, gosh, probably a month now. Um, they are both very beautiful. And all three of them are so unique. And I just, I love how we were all working on the same thing. And they all came out so differently. Um, So that is the story behind my What the Fade. Um, so I will show you this here. I have not yet blocked it. Um, I have a steam blocker on the way. Andrea Mowry actually suggests that you just lightly steam block this because brioche tends to grow and grow and grow. Um, so I knew I didn't want to wet block it or soak it. Um, I still may soak it and then just lay it without blocking too terribly much, um, just to make it smell a little fresh. Um, but I am waiting on my steam blocker or my steamer to come in um, before I give this a really good block. Um, I also have not added on the tassels. You are supposed to add a tassel to each corner. Um, and then down here at the bottom, this bottom, Point. We'll also get a tassel. So three large tassels have not been added. I want to wait until I steam it first. But I'm going to lean all the way back and see how much of this I can get in frame. So this is the right side. And like I said, you start off with two color brioche. And you work your way through increases. And then you start fading into your next two colors of brioche. And you fade into the last two colors of brioche. And then you get to this beautiful garter fade where you're fading back through the six colors one at a time until you end up back at your color A, which is what you started brioching with. So I'm sorry, I can't, I'm trying to get this whole, the whole fade <laughs> won't even fit in here. So here you can see I started with the dark uh, purpley uh, pink and then it ended with the bright purpley pink down here. And then the back side has my other colors. And, um, the back section or the wrong side of the garter does seem to fade a little bit nicer and this was something that Christy uh, brought up when she had finished hers that she liked the way that the wrong side looked when fading the garter um, because you won't have those harsh lines so there's a good example. Um, it just seems to fade a bit nicer than the right side where you get some harsh stripes in there so if that's your thing maybe think about that and um, reverse the side that you're adding your new color on if you're working on this um, I didn't mind the striping so I just went with it but I did already wear this once I wore it to work the day after I bound off and wove in my ends um, and struggled the entire day because I did not know how to wear this um, it is very large <laughs> and maybe it'll get easier to wear after I block it. Um, but I just felt a little bit like I was swimming in it all day. Um, I have broad shoulders and I feel like I'm a bit heavier up in the, um, 
shoulder area. I'm, let's be honest, I'm part of the itty bitty titty committee, so nothing to worry about there. But as far as like shoulders and upper back and stuff, I just feel like when I have a lot of stuff sitting up here on my shoulders, I feel like it's a little awkward on me. Um, so I may have to play around with how I wear this, especially after blocking. I also think that it will sit much nicer on uh, my body after I get some of the, or get the tassels on because it'll pull these little corners down um, and help everything kind of lay out a bit nicer. So something to think about. I am still really happy with it. I'm glad that I knit one. Um, it was on my Make 9 for 2019, so I'm going to check that box off. Eight more to go. <laughs> um, but I am just feeling so accomplished in the fact that I finished this. The last probably two or three colors of the Faded Garter is legitimately a labor of love. Um, those down and backs are so, so long. I was getting one down and back during an episode of something on Netflix, like a 40 minute episode. So it's a lot of knitting. I wouldn't be sad if I wore this more as a lounge on the couch type of um, just toss on me if I'm feeling chilly. I'm completely okay with that. Um, like I said, I don't know how much, and now it's warming up. Surprise, I knew that would happen. As soon as I finish, we'll have like nice 70 to 80 degree days. Um, so we'll see, but I am super, super glad that I finished it, and um, I think it's beautiful. So uh, if you're going, or if you're curious about the yarn, like I said, it is all knit out of lofty loops, lofty singles, so it is all single ply yarn, 100% merino, super wash. Uh, the colors are Five of six of them are not repeatable. They were just something that I was going with as I was playing in the dye pots. There is a purple, purplish green color in here that is my Wisteria Lane color. So I did pull that off of uh, the shelf because I thought that it fit really well with the rest of the colors I had come up with. Um, so that is, and that's the one up here. You can see it hopefully right in here. Um, it's mainly a lavender with speckles uh, of some deep green and bright green. So that is my with the fade. And beyond that, I everything else has gone to the wayside. Um, I just really gave this 110% to get it done. And as soon as I finished, I cast on a new project and have just been trucking away on this one. Apparently this has broken my cast on itis or my um, polygamist knitting ways um, and I've become very monogamous in my knitting. So, so I'm just gonna have one work in progress to share with you guys today, but then I do have a lot of stash enhancement um, to go through. Anyway, this is living in my bag that I got at the Vogue Knitting Live trip, I went up there with a wonderful group of ladies from Knit Paper Scissors. Um, Angie, who owns Knit Paper Scissors, she planned to get a bus and had a group of, I want to say there was like 55 to 60 of us uh, that rode up from um, all over in Nebraska. So we picked some up, well we picked a good majority up in Lincoln. Then we hit up some people in Gretna and then up in Omaha before we were on our way. So we had people kind of from all over in the area coming with and it was so much fun. And we were all gifted one of these bags which is a Daisy Girl and Company bag. And these are all of my pins that I picked up while I was out there. Um, so I have a little Sockmetician pin. I have some that I got from Stephen B. I have an F This Knit because I met the ladies from that podcast out there, um, and then Knit Bob Pearl. So this has a lot of memories tied to this bag, and I love it. And this is the Grain Line Cowl by Tammy Gore. So this came about, this wasn't even on my radar. Um, it wasn't necessarily, I don't know, I just, I 
wasn't on my radar and then I happened to see a post from Lauren of Lolo Did It that piqued my interest and she was the uh, dyer behind the yarn used in the sample uh, that was created by Tammy. And I really fell in love with just the stunning imagery from the pattern um, and the yarns together. And so I knew that uh, she had kits available on her site. So I went over to check out the kits on her site. And in the meantime, caught a wild hair to make my own kit from her yarn. Um, I knew that I have been wanting to knit with um, her colorway, the Dowager Countess, for like three years. It's been on my holy grail of things to get and knit, um, or my bucket list, if you will. I think I've used bucket list a couple times now. But I've been wanting to knit with the Dowager Countess for a very long time and just couldn't come up with the right project for it. So I went to look if she had any in stock, and she absolutely did. And then I love that she includes photos with her solid or tonals with the main colorway. So if you go and look at the Dowager Countess on her website and you slide through the images on the listing, she includes that colorway with other colors that they could be combined with if you want to get ideas for pairings or heels and toes or whatever. So I really, really appreciate that she goes through all of that work to do that because I was easily able to pick three colors to complement the Dowager Countess and I got those in the Little Lolos, which are her mini skeins and um, cast this on as soon as this one came off the needles. So first I'm gonna share the yarn with you and it is caked up so I apologize, um, will not be, the easiest to see, but um, this is the Dowager Countess, and it's just a very neutral colored skein with loads of different speckles in there. I'll insert a photo um, courtesy of Lauren's website uh, so you guys can see it a bit better, but this is not doing it justice. And this is on her Dreamy Base, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% silk, 10% cashmere, and let me tell you, it is so dreamy. So I just wanted to switch it up. Um, this is a new to me base of hers, and like all of the rest that I've tried so far, I absolutely adore it. Um, so I'm very happy with that. And then the three minis I chose to go with, some of them are still attached is this is blue suede shoes this is summer nights and this is sassanac so blue a pinky purple and a really pretty kind of foragey green color and these are on her whoop, their little lolos in the low original base which is 85% extra fine superwash merino, 15% nylon. <clears throat> and let me tell you, it is extra fine superwash merino. It is so soft. And again, this is the Crane Line Cowl by Tammy Gore. And here is my progress so far. And saying that this thing is flying off the needles would be an absolute understatement. I started this late Saturday night, didn't touch it at all yesterday, uh, so between late Saturday night and Monday evening, I had already made it this far. And so I believe we're knitting the cowl top down so it is in the round. Um, there is this really beautiful... Um, twisted ribbing, <laughs> I'm having brain farts. And then you've got this really pretty lace section that is just going to block out really, really nicely. And then you move into a little bit of striping. And I actually, 
So I looked at the pattern and I looked at my colors and I did a test where you take a picture in black and white of all your colors so you can tell which ones would be good to work together in color work um, based on the contrast between the colors. And in doing so, um, which is also, it's not just for color work. If you're trying to pair two or three colors together in a project um, and you want there to be a lot of contrast between them, take a picture of them in black and white on your phone. If it's an iPhone, there's a setting. Um, if you can't figure out the setting or you don't have one for whatever reason, take the picture, put it in an app that you can make uh, the photo black and white in, and then you can see how much contrast each color has with the other one. Um, which is a really good trick, especially if you're wanting to do fading and maybe you don't want a lot of contrast. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, definitely try it out. It's kind of fun. Um, so I keep getting off topic and off track, but by doing that, I knew that I wanted, there is a little section of color work in this cowl. I knew I wanted the pink and the green to be the color work sections. So before I even got to the point of adding colors, I had already picked out what was gonna be my contrast one, contrast two, and contrast three. You were supposed to start striping with contrast one, and I apparently got so excited that I went and grabbed contrast two instead and started striping that in. And then when I realized it, I was like, it's now a design element. So I did three stripes of my contrast two technically, and then three stripes of contrast one. So really, if I was following the pattern, these would have all been the blue stripes. And then you start adding in a big solid block of your contrast two, and then you can see maybe barely right here, I just have got like three or four stitches where I started working in the green color for the color work. Um, so really, all in all, I think I can get through the color work tonight. Um, it's just, it's flying, you guys. It's completely flying. And I don't know if you can hear that noise, but someone's cutting some wood or something right outside. That's fun. Don't my neighbors know that I have to podcast? It's been two and a half weeks, guys. Anyway, this, I can't say more good things about this pattern. Um, it keeps you so engaged and so interested and it's going so quick and it was exactly what I needed after I finished this. Um, the twisted rib is super simple and you get through about an inch of that before you're already jumping straight into the lace section. The lace is so easy, you guys. It's so simple to follow along with um, and it's so pretty. I know this is not even doing any of it justice. Um, but then as soon as you're like, all right, I've got a good hand on the lace, bam, it takes you straight into some striping. Now I'm into color work and it just keeps building upon itself and it's so engaging, it's so awesome. I really can't say enough. I will leave a link to this pattern down below um, and a link to my Ravelry project page where you can find out more information if you're curious about um, digging into the yarn choices or anything a little bit deeper. I also have a photo on there, I think of the three colors caked up before I even cast on, um, if you want to see those together. And I'm keeping my beginning around with my little piggy stitch marker from Hannah of the Corner of Craft. Um, this was on my fade, keeping progress or keeping track of progress on that. And then it just hopped to the next project. I, you can see here just a little bit where I've changed colors in the round. So I did not do anything for the jogless jogs. Um, there are some people who have projects on Ravelry of this that have left comments um, or helpful tips in their projects about um, decreasing the way that looks when you're changing colors um, and little tips and tricks for that. I wasn't that worried about it, so it's not super duper noticeable unless you're really looking. Um, 
And yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. That is the Grain Line Cowl by Tammy Gore, knit with Lolo Did It yarns. And I have a feeling I will finish it rather quickly. However, I do need to set it aside and get a couple more things done before the end of April that I'm wanting to use for shop samples for when I go to York, Nebraska for the Mid Plains Fiber Fair. Both of those are pretty well on their way, so I don't anticipate um, running out of time with those. So I just need to stop. <laughs> I just need to put down the super addictive cowl um, and make myself work on those other things and get them done. That is all I have to share with you as far as what I've been knitting on. Like I said, I've been very monogamous and I got this beast of a thing finished and then I've been working on that cowl. I'm hoping that next time I podcast, I will have a few more finished objects um, and I'll have some of those samples done to share with you guys too because I'm really excited about them. So I do want to share just a couple things that I received in the mail over the last two and a half weeks. Nothing too terribly crazy, um, but just some, some things that are fun. I did pick up quite a while ago, I think the beginning of February, I purchased the, I don't even know, issue 102 of Molly Makes. I originally saw this on Amy Loden, who is... Um, the Little Taylor S. I saw this on her Instagram because she wrote a tutorial on how to make a beautiful rose gold, rose gold uh, project bag for this edition of the magazine. And I had never heard of Molly Makes before. Um, I believe it is, yes, it is printed in the UK. Um, it was very reasonable. I want to say I spent eight or nine dollars on it um, and it had free shipping. The caveat being it took a very long time to get here. Um, I have not even had a chance to really dig in and look at it yet, um, but it says sew, patchwork, crochet, upcycle, and knit. So living a creative life. So I am really excited to see what all is in here. Let me see if I can flip through and find that gorgeous bag, which is the reason I bought this in the first place. Like it has a tutorial in here to make this. How cute is that? Oh my gosh. Like that looks like a fun mother daughter project to do together. So once I dig in and I really get into what else in here, Maybe I'll have some new projects for my daughter and I. There are papers in here that you can use for whatever your crafty heart desires. So this would be kind of cute to maybe rip out and um, put in a frame up on the wall would be really cute. This would make a fantastic colorway. I'm telling you guys, inspiration. Here it is, this beautiful bag. So, you know, if I ever get a wild hair and decide that I need to sew something, she's got the directions on how to make a project bag in here. I just think, here, I'll show it again. Um, if you check out her Instagram, she's got um, some even more photos of the beautiful bag she made. And she is Little Taylor S on Instagram. And apparently I was on a kick of ordering outside of the U.S. Um, <laughs> because another thing that I purchased, uh, it wasn't too terribly long ago, was this adorable, adorable pin from Wistful Empire. And she is based out of Australia. And I saw this originally on... Uh, the Corner of Craft, Hannah picked up one of these, and this is a druid staff, and it is very nerdy and very D&D, &D. and as soon as I saw Hannah's, I knew I had to have one too, because when I was playing D&D, &D, I was playing a druid, and these are like my colors in a nutshell, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's very sparkly. Oh my gosh. 
She has a lot of different designs, um, especially for like the D&D classes. There was, they're just so fun. Um, and I'm really a bit sad that I didn't get more. This is huge, by the way. This is such a good size pin. Um, and it was very reasonably priced. Um, and shipping coming from Australia was still faster than I anticipated. So that is wistfulempire.com and she is on, looks like Twitter and Instagram. So thank you, Hannah, for um, inspiring me. In keeping in the theme of things coming in from um, outside of the U.S., I received my March Hedgehog Fibers Club. So this should be no spoiler for anyone. I've received these probably a couple weeks ago. Um, I signed up for the Hedgehog Fibers Club. It is a three-month club, and I picked the Skinny Singles Club. I can't remember what it was called for sure, but it was the one that comes with two Skeins of Skinny Singles, and here are my March colors. I am a sucker for Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles. I'm not a super big fan of their sock base because it is really light. Um, it's almost like a heavy fingering, um, but I do knit a lot with their Skinny Singles base. And um, I thought a lot about getting their sport club as well. I'd be really interested to knit something with some of their other bases that they have to offer. This is Imagine That. And you guys, these pops of colors, I can't even like tell you how bright and beautiful they are in person. And this is Lollipop. neon greens in there and I think unfortunately I think these are club colorways so they are not to be repeated outside of the club um, which is part of the reason why I wanted to get in on one of these clubs so bad for so long and I finally bit the bullet and joined that being said I still have two months of this and I have one more month of the garn stories Club. I'm gonna have a lot of single ply yarn, but I'm really excited. I just love their aesthetic. I love how bright and punchy everything is. I just, goodness. And the last thing I wanted to share with you that I received is the next edition of the Sock Yarn Swappers 40 yard mini skein swap. And this was from Honeybee Knits. And I've talked about these before in the past a little bit. The Sock Yarn Swappers have a group on Ravelry. Um, Kay, the Crazy Sock Lady, also offers these swaps each month in her Ravelry group. The idea behind them, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because you can go read it all for yourself. Um, the idea behind it is you throw your name into the list of people interested you pay $35 if you're in the U.S. It's a little bit more if you're outside the U.S. And then at a certain time, you will be sent 10 40-yard minis um, from a different dyer each month. And it's not on a subscription, so you can pick and choose which one you want to join in on. Um, and it's just a really great way to kind of test out different dyers different bases. Um, I believe the majority of them are on a sock base. But if you're into scrappy projects, if you're into having little swappable little bits, um, like if you're doing swap packages, these are great things to include to send along to friends. Um, yeah, I just think it's super fun. Um, and of course, all of the information for colorways is listed on here. So this was Honeybee Knits. I have not used any of her yarn before, so I'm really excited to dig into this and add some of these to my bits and blob, bits and blobs, bits and bobs, and my other scrappy projects. It seems like a lot, 
it really wasn't too terribly much. It's just everything that I had ordered finally all came in in the same week or so. A little bit of shop update stuff. Right now, as we speak, there are only four advent calendar spots still open for round two. Um, thank you guys so, so, so much for the people that jumped in on round one and the people that are jumping in on round two. I'm so excited to get these going for you guys and get them out to you. I'm really excited that I had the, <laughs> the brains to actually think to put this all together earlier in the year so I could offer it to more people in the long run. Um, last year I sold myself a little bit short on time um, and wasn't able to, wasn't, I kept the pool very, very small um, because it was my first year and I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into. Um, and now that I had dipped my toes into that water, I am ready to dive in head first. And so I am offering a much wider pool um, for advent calendars this year. So I am doing it in waves. Um, we already had round one signups happen. Round two are happening right now. Those will stay open until they fill. There are four spots left. Um, and then the next wave will likely come maybe June or July, and then maybe a final wave in August. Um, this way I can get them dyed up, packaged up um, in batches instead of waiting until last minute like I did last year, scrambling around like a chicken with my head cut off and hoping to God that I got you everything in one piece. <laughs> um, so professional. So that is my plan. Um, and like I said, I wanna thank you guys so much for those of you that have already just been so brave in trusting me um, to provide some fun yarn for your Advent season this December. Um, they will be shipping out in waves again. So everyone that was in round one will likely, well, not likely, they will be getting theirs sent before round two, for example. Um, and I will likely start shipping those in August or September. So there is a good possibility that you will get them well before December and then it will be on you guys to keep your little fingers off of it until December 1st. So I'm sorry to put you in that position. Um, if anyone wants me to hang on to theirs until like December gets closer, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to do that. I just didn't want to have to ship out, you know, or order a truck, rent a U-Haul <laughs> to get them all to the post office or make my mail carrier just royally pissed right before the holiday season. Um, I did feel a little bit bad last year because they're already in the crazy, the crazy mode of everyone doing Black Friday shopping, Cyber Monday shopping, gift shipping, just I felt so bad. So I might have to make them a little plate of cookies or something. So I thought in order to be kind to me and in order to be kind to my post office um, people, I would do them in waves. So that is the thought process behind that. Um, if any of you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to shoot me an email or contact me via the website. I would be more than happy to answer your questions. The one question I have been getting a lot about these are, Will they be a good variety of colors or things that can be worn year round? To answer your questions, yes. These are one of a kind, playing in the dye pots, getting the whole wide range of color spectrum uh, or rainbow spectrum, if you will. Um, they are not holiday colors. They are not themed to holiday things. They are not Christmassy. Um, even my Christmas skein from last year, the Big 100 Gram, was called Christmas Cheer. Um, that may have been called Christmas Cheer, but the colors were not indicative of Christmas, if that makes any sense. Um, so I want to create these in a way where you can make something with them um, to wear all year round. You can knit with them all year round, whatever. So I hope that helps. It will be very much dyed in my style. Um, and just having a play. And I feel like I did a fairly good job of 
um, getting the entire range of color spectrum last year. I did include um, some photos on the listing of last year's advent. Um, so my friend Renee, who is just the best person ever, she caked all of hers up in these adorable teensy little cakes and took some photos of hers uh, for me to share. So those are her photos. Thank you, Renee. They are so helpful to everyone. And I will make sure I take my own photos <laughs> this year so I don't have to beg and plead for those because that was the one thing that I forgot to do. Um, so I hope that helps answer that question. Um, just because you might see something from last year does not mean that's going to be what's happening this year. Just I don't want that um, preconceived notion to move forward. It's just an example of the variety of colors. Anyway, you guys get the drill. If you have any further questions, drop it in the Ravelry group or email me or message me on Instagram. However you find it easiest to get a hold of me, I will try to respond ASAP. And into some life stuff. Why my life has been so incredibly, absolutely upside down bonkers recently. As I mentioned, I feel like March happened and then I close my eyes and now it's April and every single week in April is jam packed through to the end. <sighs> so I'll just take a moment for a deep breath. I switched, um, well, let me go back. I work full time um, beyond my dye business. So this is, dyeing is 100% a side job that maybe someday down the road will be my full time job. I would absolutely adore it. Um, but for right now, while I have children in school and a home um, and mouths to feed and things of that nature, um, I have to continue working full time. And that is completely the other half. If I were to split myself down the middle, you have one half that is in love with knitting, in love with yarn, in love with making and crafting. And then the other half is in love with web development, um, being super nerdy with code, things like that. So when I say I'm living my best life, it is not a lie. I am so blessed to be able to work at a full-time job in a fantastic company here in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, where I get to work on people's websites every day. So that keeps me super busy. And then I come home and I work uh, for Lofty Loops Yarns and I knit. Um, but I recently moved within that company to a different department. Um, and it has been about a six week transition period where, um, and especially the last three weeks, I've been splitting time between my old department and my new. So I would not leave my old department high and dry and I could kind of work my way into the shift while they were backfilling in and trying to get someone hired um, for my departure. So, that means <laughs> between 7.30 a.m. and 5 o'clock, I am just, everything is just, my brain might explode. So busy. Um, but I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so ready for the challenge. Um, I am ready to re-engage my passion and relight that fire. Um, but on top of all that, my niece is getting married in two weeks, and so I have been busy helping um, helping plan the bachelor and bachelorette parties. Um, that's happening this weekend, so I likely will not be able to get to record another podcast um, because I need to be helping out with that. And then the next day will likely be a recovery day where I don't do anything but lay on the couch in my sweatpants hungover. Um, the following week is their wedding and I will be taking photos of the groom's party for them and then attending the wedding and attending the reception and again, recovery day afterwards. Um, and then we're into Easter. So holy cow, Easter. And 
The following weekend, I will be in York, set up at the Mid Plains Fiber Fair all weekend. I will get out there Friday night to set up, and then bright and early Saturday morning, I will be ready to meet all of you that are able to come and say hello and squish some yarn in person. Um, I might be a walking zombie by that point, but <laughs> um, I have planned a few days in there to kind of give myself some breathing room and uh, some last minute prepping. So hopefully I won't be entirely, hopefully I'll still be a person by that point, but I'm really excited. Um, it feels like as soon as the weather starts getting nice outside, life just gears up like crazy and having a job change happen right in the middle of all that is And then on top of that, my son has started learning how to drive. He has his learner's permit now, so there's that. I try to stay out of the car if he's in the driver's seat. My husband has been so kind into offering to teach him how to drive. I will likely get on that in about six months' time, when he's had six months to figure it out. Um, but for right now, I went around the block with him once, and I'm done. <laughs> so... Kids are busy, I am busy, my husband's busy, life in general's busy, and I'm happy. If I'm busy, I'm happy. Um, I would much rather be busy than be bored. So there's that. Um, that being said, I am not sure. I will, I will try, try, try to continue with a regular upload schedule but I cannot make any promises um, that it will be weekly because I won't have my weekends for the next few weekends to record. So we'll just kind of see how it goes and play it by ear. I am hoping to get one final podcast up before I go to York. Um, and then I might do a little vlogging while I'm at York. Um, I'm having Christy stay with me. She's going to be my booth babe for the weekend. And um, I'm sure we'll get into some shenanigans like we did at VKL. Um, so there might be some fun stuff to catch some footage of, or maybe we'll have to burn the footage afterwards. I don't know. But either way, um, I hope that if you guys are in the area, the Nebraska area, um, first of all, I hope you guys are recovering from the awful flooding that we've had. And I hope that you guys are um, bouncing back if you've been affected by that. Um, we seem to have been getting quite a lot of help, which is fantastic. I've had a lot of you guys reach out and offer to help or offer to donate. So thank you guys so much. Um, it sounds like everyone's well on their way to putting their lives back together. However, it's not going to happen overnight. So um, I just want to send well wishes if you guys are in Nebraska, if you guys are experiencing any of that. My heart is with you. Um, but if you can take a break and you need a break, um, come see us in York on April 27th and 28th. We will be there all weekend and I will have loads of yarn for you guys to squish. So I'm super excited and yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys. I could keep on going, but I'm not going to because... <sighs> it's time to knit on this cowl. So... Anyway, until I talk with you guys next time, I hope you enjoy your weeks. I hope you enjoy your knitting or whatever it is that you're working on. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track and that you guys enjoy watching the content. Um, if you guys have ideas on what I can name this lovely, beautiful dress form, uh, leave it down below. I would love to hear your suggestions. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.